Okay, this is the October 2021 P1 paper. It's question number four. Uh, as you can see by looking at it, it's a trigonometric graph here. So we're in the trigon trigonometric ratios chapter, and we're going to be transforming trig graphs. In particular with this one, we're going to be looking at cos x and transforming it to cos 2x. Uh, I'll worry about the questions in a second. Let's just think about um, what our learning would already tell us. For any trig graph, I'm going to draw it here just so you can see it in comparison to the actual graph that they've given us. For any trig graph, if it's sine, if it's cos, if it's tan, you should be able to do the equivalent of what I'm going to do here for cos. Right, so I know the general shape of cos. Comes down there, comes back up there, and comes back up to that point there. Cos goes between 1 and minus 1 on the y-axis. On the x-axis, this length here is called the period. It's how far we go before the graph just repeats again on itself. And that's 360 for um, cos and for sine. Cos is what we're looking at at the moment. So that means, and I can do these really quickly then, that these key points are going to be 90, 180, 270, and 360, where we have a maximum value hitting the axis, a minimum value hitting the axis, and back up to a maximum value there. So we need to know all of those. And if I know all of those, the only difference I've got here is I've got cos 2x. So what does cos 2x do? Or what does f a x do? f a x is a transformation where it's a stretch, talk about the word stretch in a second, um, of a scale factor 1 over a parallel to the x-axis. So really, stretch is the wrong word, because if I'm stretching at 1 over a, it's a stretch of scale factor a half in this case, what actually is going to happen is that this graph is going to be squashed everything's going to happen twice as quickly on the x-axis, okay? So what that means, for example, let's just look at this first bit here, where I would be doing that journey there from 1 down to 90. That just happens twice as quickly, and that value there would be 45 degrees. So now I'm actually going to get rid of all that teaching material just to um, say we can put all our information now actually on this graph to be able to then work out what the question's asking us. So let's just get rid of that for a second and say based on what I just said then we've got that the maximum value is 1 and the minimum value is minus 1 and whereas on the cos graph this is 90 degrees here this is going to happen after 45 degrees. That will be 90 degrees to that point there we can see they're going up in 45, so 135, 180, and 225. And you should be able to do that pretty quickly. I mean, I've ever had to explain it to you. That should be just second nature to you. Right, let's actually look at the question then. So the question says uh, Q and R are where they are on the graph, here and here. Can we, for Q, work out the coordinates? Yes, I can. And for R, can I work out what K is? K it's just going to be the x value there. So that doesn't take any work at all now because I've already done all my work. Just need to say it. A part 1. If we talk about the coordinate of Q then, the coordinate of Q is simply Q equals 90 minus 1. And for part 2, if I'm saying what's K going to be, K is just 225. So K is 225 there. So that's part A done. Part B then. Part B says um, there's exactly two solutions to cos 2x equals P. Well, if cos 2x equals P, that's where I have the graph y equals cos 2x and the graph y equals P, and I put them equal to each other. What does y equals p look like? Well, y equals p should be a straight line just going horizontally across like that. So here's y equals p. 
And then y equals p obviously can move. It can be, you know, it can be up here at 1.5, up here at 2 if you want to, but up here at 1.5, 1.4, 1.3. When we get to the point where y is equal to 1, that is a situation where I have two solutions. Make that a bit bigger. There's a solution and there's a solution. So y equals 1 on its own is definitely one solution to the idea or one answer to the idea that I get two solutions there. So I'll sort of put that up here and just keep that in my mind. Y equals one is one of them. What about as I come, uh, Y equals anything bigger than one, then there's no solutions. They're not, they're not touching at all. So two solutions here. As soon as I go into this region, there's three solutions, okay? There's here, here, and here. So that's no good. And that's actually gonna carry on Oops, sorry. All the way till I get down to the x-axis, okay? So anywhere between 1 and 0 on the y's there, we're not going to get anything at all. But the second we go, let's go into it a little bit, the second we go past the x-axis, we're in the situation again where I've got two values, okay? So what that means is, if y is less than naught, as in where it is at the moment, yep, I've got two values here, 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 all the way to the point there, where now I've only got one value. So what we're saying with that then, is if y is less than zero, y is less than zero, but greater than minus one, this is this region in here, anywhere in there, I'm gonna get two solutions to where the two lines meet. I can't include minus one on this one because minus one is actually that point there where there's only one solution. So I've now got my answer. My answer is these two things both combined. So all I need to do is to now say that. So two solutions, at, let's not use that symbol, let's actually write the word, at y equals one, and two solutions when y is between naught and minus one, but they actually want the range of values for p, so just do it properly, that means that p is equal to one, and p is between naught and minus one. Okay, hopefully that all makes sense to everyone.